breakdown NVIDIA Q1 FY25 earnings for us? I mean, it's essentially, that's a masterpiece that they should, they should hang that in the loop. <laughs> I mean, because everywhere you look, six to 10 to 15% ahead of buy side whisper expectations. And the, if you look from a chip perspective, it's not slowing down in six hour innings. Yeah. So you start, I would almost say they had to do the split. Otherwise, you'd be looking at forty dollars of EPS earnings in twenty five, twenty six. I mean, it could kind of get like almost like Twilight Zone types of numbers. And I think the reality is like, look, we just can't. We just had our Taiwan checks. We just came back, you know, in terms of our Asia checks. It's showing basically through the end of next year, like we're essentially like sold out, right? So. And I think there were some fears about double ordering and things like that. As the godfather of AI Jensen talked about, none of that, right? I think, yeah. And you and you guys see it firsthand. But if you don't get these chips, you're in the back of the line. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, hey, Dan, what do you think about this? So, if I look at the print from July of uh, last year, right? They beat by thirty percent on EPS. 22 percent on revenue and here we are nvidia only beat 10 percent on eps and only six percent on revenue so the beats are declining is that because wall street analysts you know folks like yourself are getting better at 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 the at the expectations or or something different numbers came up 15 percent during the quarter so essentially now what's happening is Every week, as everyone does their trips, numbers go up. And now it's our, even you could be like buy side whisper expectations are ramping further and further up, but we're not even there. In other words, I think the investors that I talk to, you're now starting to do some scenarios to be like, okay, like, I, I don't think that we see any sort of slowdown for another four to six quarter. And under that assumption, that's why it goes back to like, when people are like, oh, it's expensive and the stock. Look, I think so many so many investors that have missed every transformational growth theme from Amazon to Microsoft to Tesla, Meta, you know, many others, it's getting too caught up in just the straight PE valuation on next year's earn. I think you got to look out next three years. And I yeah. think in the next three years, we're talking NVIDIA, we're talking three trillion and yep. four trillion is not <laughs> so, so 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 Kelly Evans asked me that when I went on, like, could it be four? And I said, at this point it could probably get to five. I mean, realistically, at the run rate, it could happen. And 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 the interesting thing is though, Dan, and I'd love to get your take on this though, is like it feels like it's all clear air. Like literally, they're flying at like forty eight thousand feet. There's no comp like do you see any like real like do you see any of the people that kind of claim to be competition as actually meaningfully being able to compete anytime soon? I mean that won't happen until mid twenty six at the earliest. So to your point, Jensen's flying that plane and investors, they're sitting in three A, drinking <laughs> a cabernet, watching Netflix, feeling really good about where that's going. And I think that's why I know so betting against it, you're betting against a force that we haven't seen since the mid nineties start of the internet. The only difference is look at the actual profitability in those margins. And I think the bigger story here, and you know, you guys do a great job always talking about it, and obviously see it for your clients, like if someone told you Dell is an AI play six months ago. Now you, you guys were there, but others, they'd be like, what? Yeah. So now look at ServiceNow, Oracle, start to go down the list, right? You know, it's like, it's not just Microsoft and NVIDIA. So I think we're really going to start to see a re-reading as well as numbers go higher across the rest of the pack. Totally agree on that. And and Dan, on the, uh, on the competitive front, 
let's just say that over you know two and a half years uh you're looking at a 400 billion dollar market and it is possible for nvidia to have stratospheric growth and by the way intel and amd can grow uh, at the same time in addition to you know some of the competition from aws azure and google doing their own um doing their own accelerators i mean is that is that the way you're kind of looking at this hey there's going to be competition because uh amd is getting traction intel next year will have its own uh gpu uh but it it it, it doesn't even mean that it, it would take nvidia off track it's not going to take them off track. We're talking about demand they can fill. Now, look, yeah. if I'm betting on someone, it's we just do an AMD. That's going to – like if I if there's another player I'm betting on, I have confidence that they will get some of that overdraft. But it's essentially overflow. Yeah. And the reality well, I mean, the is – yeah, where is it? No, I was just going to say there's a market to be had, though, by being the overflow. You know, it, it's funny, Dan, I use the analogy of – NVIDIA sits right now where Intel sat at its peak for compute. I mean, at its peak where it has like a multi-decade lead. It could literally screw up for the next like 12 years and still have 70% of the market. I mean, that's kind of like, because I mean, look at that's what's happened with in a really broad rush. Intel has had a really tough decade and still has majority share of certain architectures. The problem is now the architecture is changing. <laughs> so, and the problem right now, it's like the godfather of AI. Jensen sitting in his office, the dark office with his black leather jacket, and people are coming in. Jensen, can I get just a little peek? He's like, eh, we'll see in a year and a half. So by being the godfather of a fourth industrial revolution, betting against that on valuation with your 10 spreadsheets, tough bet, right? <laughs> Well, the only thing I guess that's interesting for folks like us, Dan, is we have to try to see the things that happen a little bit before everyone else sees them. That's what makes us any good at what we do. You know, I've I think we all have our you know our claim to fame wins. You know, I I, I always point back to July 22. I went on and Becky Quick was uh, hitting me on on why I was still saying Nvidia when it was at 150 and it was it was yep. it was burning. And I go, look, do you believe in AI or you don't? I said I believe in AI, and so th they're the only company right now that's got the whole stack. It's going to also you guys. I actually, when you say like that's your claim, I actually think my and and in my view, where you, where you and Patrick have been so ahead, it's not just on that. It's names like Dell, the IBM re-rating. Yeah. Like if you look service now and some, see, I feel yeah. like I feel like you you're some of the only ones else out there that like. You were like three steps ahead, and now that's starting to come through. I think that that's even because it's not just about Nvidia, right? It's about the ripple effect. Because I think what's what's fascinating now is the second, third, fourth derivatives playing out. You yeah. guys have just been road warriors. I feel like every set, I'm like, how could they be in another user conference? Uh, yeah. Hey, Dan, in, Dan, I, I just want to thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, Dan, Dan and I love to talk about talk about ourselves and pat each other on the back but but coming from you that 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 means a lot i mean listen the thesis we threw out almost 18 months ago it's going to start in the hyperscaler data center it's going to move to enterprise it uh, which also pulls with it enterprise SaaS ai and then by the way it's going to the ai pc look at qualcomm's numbers all all time high okay and we're going to see where the, the, by the way, the next step that was an all time high too, by the way, Pat. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Dan, after this, it's going to be the AI smartphone. So, no, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Apple. And, and just, so, and just yeah. so you know, from, from our perspective, 18 months ago, where I, you feel like you're like a lone wolf, right? Like, just like with a thesis, <laughs> I see, I actually like people like, you know, like all the work that that your team does, as someone that I super respect, I would look at the stuff you're talking about to triangulate what I'm doing. Because I think it's important where like, and we've all been there, right? Like when you're in markets where everyone's saying like, you're a clown, you're crazy. But I'd be like, yeah. okay, look, like if I'm in Asia, 
on a two week trip and I'm seeing it throughout the supply chain, you could see that from the 10th floor of your office building. I'm, I'll, I'll go with my data. You go with your data. Exactly. Oh, that's great stuff. So, hey, yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, I got, I got, we got what, one, like, maybe a minute or two, Pat, and then we got to, we got to roll. And Dan, thanks so much. I, you, you heading to the studio or you heading to the office? I just that... came back in between then a podcast and stuff. Look, <laughs> um, it's no, but I was super excited to, to all the work that you guys are doing. It's, it is just, it's phenomenal. Because I think when I think AI revolution, we're all, we're all going to be a part. And to be a part of this journey with you guys is going to be awesome. So next week we sit down um, our big event, the summit. Love for you to give it a shout, Dan, if you ever get the chance. Our six We got Bill McDermott as our, our main keynote. We're going to be sitting down with him in, in the office next week. What should, what should I ask him? What should I tell him? Dan Ives wanted me to ask you, what should we I, I, ask? What should we ask him? When you have the goat there, ask McDermott, be like, look, you've seen everything the last 30 years. Where does this compare, whether it was mid-90s, early? I mean, the guy's seen everything from Oracle days to, you know, to the cloud shift, to PC. I think it's for him to kind of separate how real is this versus hype. And I think when it comes from his mouth, the credibility there, it's it's a drop to mic when McDermott talks. Because I think, in my opinion, in that Mount Rushmore of tech CEOs, of course, Godfather of AI Jensen, Nadella, Cook, dude, McDermott's up there, man. They're starting to etch it. Well, I I don't know, Pat. I mean, look, we should do this again. Uh, we should have you back. You know, what's the next? You know, Apple? Is that what be like? So, w you know, WWDC, yeah. So, so maybe we uh, we can get you to chime back in for WWDC. Yeah. You know, Pat and I we pick on Apple more than others. We can come in and kick our ass for it because we've been a little harder on them than than you just came out and basically said they're going to get this next trend right. So I guess but they we'll deserve, see. but they deserve, they deserve that. Now you have two point two billion reasons in terms of iOS come out and now have the renaissance of growth. And I view Apple as where I viewed Meta 18 months ago. And it listen, Apple is going to be amazing uh, if they can leverage their platform for the AI iPhone. And they're, they're going to do that. I mean, they're not going to lose share, okay? I mean, their biggest thing is uh, reducing the replacement cycle for your phone and imagine if they would do that by a year run run those numbers dan <laughs> and right right now right now the new york city cab driver that i just they're bearish on apple <laughs> right i love it hey dan thank you for joining us this is great by the way keep your eye on taiwan next week at computex dan's going to be there but there's going to be a lot of announcement Qualcomm, Intel, AMD are all bringing out new stuff there. By the way, all three CEOs will be there, including your AI godfather, Jensen Wong. And now Moorhead's going to start wearing his sunglasses at these user conferences. But you got to take credit. You got to give me credit. When you start wearing the sunglasses and you start to wearing the sunglasses indoors. Okay? Buddy, I, I got to tell you. No, nobody does it like McDermott. Dan, Dan, the future is so no, bright. McDermott's the goat. He's, he's top of there. Come on. He's, the future is so bright, Dan. I, I got to wear these nonstop.